is an iceberg. It's really cold here, but it's also really beautiful. This place has a mythology all its own. So we've got a full hour of Alaskanets. Tourism types up here market the 49th state as the land of intensity. It's twice the size of Texas, so we figure it's big and intense enough to handle some high impact myth busting. Like most of our favorite myths, this one involves some drunken friends and explosives. You got a group of drunken friends, one of whom's just bought a brand new SUV, and they all decide that they want to go duck hunting with their dog. Except there's nothing around them but a frozen lake, and no duck is going to land on a frozen lake. So they need to make a hole. One of them offers up a stick of dynamite with a 20 second fuse to make a big hole. And throws that stick of dynamite as hard as he can. I can see what's coming. The dog, following its natural impulses, chases after that stick of dynamite, catches it, starts ferrying it back to the guy under the brand new SUV. Uh oh. The dog, the dynamite, and the SUV go boom! The SUV goes down to the bottom of the lake and the guy who owned it is still making payments. This not so urban myth surely stretches the bounds of human stupidity. My sympathies are all with the dog, though you must admit it's as funny as hell. But maybe it's too funny to be true. As Jamie and Adam set off to find their frozen lake, it's worth noting that this folktale is almost as old as dynamite itself. Over 100 years ago, Australian author Henry Lawson wrote a comic story along very similar lines. He called it the loaded dog, and needless to say, he made the whole thing up. Still, we can't assume it couldn't happen, and that's enough reason to put it to the test. The first thing we obviously needed was a frozen lake, and the researchers found us one here in Alaska behind me. This snowfield you see is, in fact, Fisher Pond, a man-made lake, which means there are no fish for us to kill, with a nice coating of rock-hard ice on top. The ice on the pond is too thick to dig through, and that supports the myth. But can it support a two-ton truck? Okay, here we go. Orson Smith and his fancy ice drill should give us a quick answer. Fans of slapstick should appreciate the <laughs> breakthrough moment. That's a hell of a thing. The ice core cracks up as it's bashed loose. Look at that. Put back together, it's a foot and a half thick. So it's got vertical crystals that make it really uh, stronger than average. So it's safe for us to drive our SUV out here? Yes. All yes, right. I think so. Good. That'll hold a lot more than that SUV weighs. So far, so good. And it's really cold. Out here on the lake, it's 20 below. But that can't slow down the science. But this story has a ton of components to it. And the first part of it is how far can you throw a stick of dynamite? Standard stick of dynamite, about eight inches long, uh, about a half a pound. I figure I can throw it about an M5, which is 100 feet. That's how we measure things, Adam and I. Remember, kids, this isn't real dynamite. We would never throw real dynamite, and neither should you. All right, Jimmy. I want you to put your chi into this thing. That's it. Go! Nice. Jamie's toss is up over the 100 foot mark. Now it's Adam's chance to prove he's got the uh, mojo of the oh. throw, Joe. <laughs> Those look to be about the same. Two hefty, manly throws with an average distance of 125 feet. Okay, time to bring out the dog. This is Rudy, a young black Labrador. Puffing, drooling, and full of running, he's a born retriever, making him the perfect candidate to try to cover the distance there and back before the 20-second fuse fizzles out. The myth is about a black lab that retrieves a stick of dynamite. That's what Rudy is. As you can see, he's raring to go. He really wants to retrieve that stick of dynamite. And has no idea what he's signed up for. 